Good morning and a happy Tuesday morning to everybody. All right, you guys, the princess and the shaman got married, but there are a few problems. Not only did they monetize this wedding with Netflix and Hello Magazine, they sold their own personal gin at the reception and she was selling her clothing brand in the hotel. I'm not kidding. There is a lot to cover in this video, so let's just jump in and cover it, shall we? Let's go. I told you about the princess and the shaman. I did a video on it not that long ago. Links to those two videos are in the description box. Remember, this is a man that said that cancer was a choice. Anyway, they finally had their wedding. I did not realize that, uh, I knew the guy was bisexual. I did not realize he was HIV positive. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is Dirk with his former partner, Hank, who he was engaged to and who he was arrested for domestic violence. Hank said he is not a good man. And when Dirk needed a kidney transplant, this guy, Hank, did a GoFundMe to raise the money. Now, the kidney came from one of his siblings. It came from his sister. This is him and his sister when they were younger. Now, while these pictures are going by, let me give you a little bit more of information. Derek claimed in a 2020 interview with Vanity Fair that he grew up in extreme wealth with domestic servants and private planes, thanks to a successful architect father. Records show, however, that his father was a contractor who declared bankruptcy twice. Problem is, his own mother has refuted his version of a privileged up bringing, uh, saying there are plenty of other questions raised about his colorful past, which has seen him spend time in jail and being arrested several times. He has spoken previously back in 2002 of being HIV positive, and I told you before, he claimed that he died of renal failure and he came back to life, which cemented his path of being a shaman. Now, a little bit more background information. This is what he claims. He said he was beaten by his father and stepmother if he tried to channel his shamanic powers, which he claims emerged at a young age and came from his father's side of the family. He said that he had a, a great grandmother who was a powerful medicine woman who started visiting him in his dreams when he was five. Records show, however, that great-great-grandmother who was born and died in New Orleans called into question that she arrived from um, Haiti, which is what he claimed. Listen, this man has been caught in multiple lies. He even claimed in 2021 that he was a hybrid of a space lizard, okay? But of course, he claimed that the reason that nobody wanted him to marry the princess had nothing to do with his his lies or the fact that he was bisexual or HIV. No, no, no. It was all about his color. Here's what he had to say in an interview and uh, watch the princess's head while he's talking because as he's claiming that the people of Norway are racist, she's shaking her head yes in agreement. Unbelievable. Okay, watch this and why people have such a, 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 an issue with it and why people write all this hate and, and death threats to us and all this stuff for being together. Because one, they don't want to see a black man in the royal family because there's never been one in the history of histories in the European royal family. So that's a huge thing. Second, she's a female. Uh, it's different when a, when a royal prince chooses uh, a, a woman of color because it's like, oh, he's a man. Of course, he can choose whoever he wants. But for a princess to choose a man of color has never been done in history. And so people, uh, you know, have a it, it's, it's really tough for a lot of people to be able to to handle that. So he pulled the race card. It had nothing to do with the lies or anything else. It's No, it was all the race card. By the way, this picture above is one of his sisters who said that she's had enough of him attacking their family and there's probably going to be a lawsuit. Okay, so the wedding went forward, shockingly enough. And here is the itinerary. Obviously, we don't have pictures of everything, but um, a lot of stuff we do have pictures of. So let's go where we go. There was a family dinner. There was a meet and greet. I have to be very honest and tell you that I am not impressed with uh, the outfits that they chose. His colors, the colors of the outfits that he chooses is, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this, the guy has no taste as far as I can tell. Even in the engagement photos, they were horrible. It was a full weekend of events and, oh my gosh, lots of things to do, lots of things seen. Um, but 
Listen, she wanted to marry this guy, so here you go. So during one of the nights, they had a salsa dance and they made sure, now remember, the Netflix cameras were there and so they put on this big, you know, dance routine, the cameras, there's the cameras to the right and the whole family was there, look at this lady to the left with the, with the, I don't know what you even call what she's wearing. It looks like something from the sixties with all the fringes. So the two of them put on this big salsa dance for the cameras. It, it was just, yeah, I don't even know what to make of this. And again, with his shirt, I, I, guys, I'm not trying to be difficult, but his, his taste in clothing, like somebody needs to help this man. I, I, he really loves the color pink. So then moving on. So the day before the wedding, they hosted this lavish boat party down, you know, the river. And this boat tour took place after the Latin American themed party with the salsa dancing that I just showed you. So everybody piled onto this boat. Uh, looks like beautiful scenery. It looks also like they were serving some um, snacks and some alcohol. You can see the king and queen were there. I think, the, but also look behind them on the right there. The Netflix camera was there. That's why the king and queen were at the back of the boat. Because remember, they're not supposed to be in any of the footage. That, that was part of the agreement. We'll tape it, but you can't be, you know, they don't want to be in it. Now, because of the deal that these two made with Netflix and Hello Magazine, family members can't even take private photos. There was absolutely no photos allowed. That was part of the ban. Because these two were trying to make money off of their wedding. And so, unfortunately, the only pictures that were going to be taken of the actual wedding and, until they step outside are going to be Netflix. But, of course, you guys know how that works. People took photos anyway, and the photos showed up. Now, a lot of the guests showed up. Uh, oh, my God, this was really interesting. A lot of the guests that were coming in were recognizable. There were a lot of European royalty. Interestingly enough, nobody from the UK apparently was invited as far as we can tell. Probably because the whole Harry Meghan thing. You guys know what I'm saying. Martha's three teenage daughters, and there they are. Maud, Leah, and Emma were expected to be three of the seven bridesmaids. And there were a lot of bridesmaids, and they were all in pink. Very interesting. Of course, Pops tried to get some pictures of uh, the wedding party and the wedding as it took place, and they were successful. So what you're about to see is some of what went on inside this tent. They were married in a tent. So here we go. They were married in an emotional ceremony, it's being reported, on August 31st. They married on the grounds of a hotel called Hotel Union in this village, in, you know, I can't even tell you, in, in Norway is what it is. Senior members of the royal family and 350 guests were there to watch the wedding. It looks like her daughter is one of the people who walked her down the aisle. Her father, I'm guessing, refused to do it because remember, as I just said, there was a deal signed with Netflix and the king and queen have said that they will not be in any of the footage. Therefore, he couldn't walk his own daughter down the aisle because there was no way around that. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, everybody's talking about the fact that she's wearing a white gown again. Uh, this is her second marriage. She has three children. However, with that being said, after she divorced her first husband, he unalived himself two years later. So I guess, tech, I don't know if that makes her a widow or what that makes her, but okay, so she's wearing a white dress. I don't think that that's the end of the world. Uh, they're saying that their vows were very emotional, both of them, and they looked very happy together. So because there was a deal in place and there was no other way to get the footage and the photos, the two of them did a walk after the wedding while the rest of the guests went, you know, wherever it was they were going, I guess, for the reception. They, they went and did this walk outside of the hotel. Here they are on the balcony of the hotel, but then they did a walk. Interesting, you notice the um, insignia on his sleeve. Yeah. Anyway. They did their walk. I wish I could show you the sound that went with the video because nobody was really whooping and yelling and saying, you know, congratulations. People were just, I think they were actually stunned that the wedding went forward. I mean, I'm just not gonna lie. Now, in one of my previous videos, I told you that Martha Louise had agreed not to make money off of her titles, 
But then she signed the deal with Netflix and Hello Magazine, and that has caused a massive conflict within the royal family and a lot of public controversy because people are disturbed that she pulled a Harry and Meghan. She used her royal connections to earn money, and people there are seeing it as a sign of disrespect to King Harold. Now, a few other controversies came out. Apparently, there was not an open bar. Guests had to be given five drink vouchers for drinks at Friday night's party and the reception on Saturday. And if your voucher ran out, which, by the way, were drinks featuring cocktails made with the two of them have a customized gin that they made, uh, then you had to buy from their own gin. Another problem was a pop-up clothing shop that apparently showed up in the hotel and the items were from a clothing brand, Hest, that the princess owns a large stake in the brand. She founded it five years ago with two friends. I mean, unbelievable. Let's not forget that last year, Martha Louise told the BBC that there was a lot of turmoil because she decided to take a different path than that of a traditional royal. And she said, I'm spiritual and that's a taboo. They're not talking about the fact that she claims to be clairvoyant. She claims that she ran a school at one point where she could teach students to create miracles and talk to angels. That's the problem. I wonder if that makes them a perfect match because after all, let's not forget that Mr. Verrett said that he is the latest of six generations of shamans. And, you know, he claims he died for four minutes, got all the information from the other side and then came back. Now I'd like to show you the full walk for the Netflix cameras. Here you go. A fabulous wedding photo was shown at the end and it showed who was missing from the wedding. And one of the people missing was Prince Hakon's stepson, Marius, and the groom's mother, as well as his sister. Now the stepson, we know I did a video on it, he assaulted his girlfriend. And so he was uninvited from the wedding because several guests apparently threatened to withdraw if he attended. Not only did they not invite the groom's mother, who, by the way, is 81 years old, they sent her a cease and desist letter threatening legal action if she continued to talk about them. I say keep talking, woman. It's just like the cease and desist that Harry and Meghan sent, which wasn't worth the paper it was written on. All right, you guys, put those comments down because I'm really looking forward to reading them on this one. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell for all notifications. Then go down into the description box where you'll find the link to video number two and follow me over. Let's go.